Hello, I'm Sophie. Welcome to part two of our three-part mini-series. Hello, I'm Amy. Sophie and I will be focusing on the middle stage investigation process in this video. Thanks so much for joining. So, Amy, when a business commences an investigation, what is best practice for record keeping? Can an employee record interviews? In most states and territories, surveillance laws generally operate to prevent recording without consent. We recommend having a script and an agenda ready, record meeting minutes, and collating the necessary information into an investigation report. And so a business has their clear allegations, they have their agenda and questions ready. Who should a business interview first? Normally, we recommend interviewing the complainant first to establish the full nature of their grievance and the facts before proceeding with interviewing witnesses. Once you have a clear storyline of the allegation, you can then interview the respondent to fact check their side of the story based on what evidence you have. This way, you won't have vague allegations to present to the respondent, and this will reduce the need to re-interview them every time something new comes to light from a different person. And you mentioned an investigation report earlier, Amy. Who should put this together, and are they the final decision maker on the outcome? An investigation report should be completed by the person conducting the investigation, normally someone from a HR or senior management level. They should pass their findings on to a neutral person not involved in the investigation, such as a CEO, who can make an unbiased decision on whether findings substantiate the allegations or not and the recommended outcomes. Thanks for all your responses, Amy. A final question is, can an employee outright refuse to participate in an investigation? This query has a degree of complexity to it, so Neith will be responding to that in a separate video.